Okay, so we're at 33, uh, we're at five past, so I think it's probably a good time to get started. So uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we know it's been quite a lot of news to take in, uh, especially with the, uh, the add-in of the white paper today, so we appreciate everything till now. The purpose of this AMA is to give you a quick recap of what you've received. So we've got a nice little presentation that Claudio and Greg will take you guys through. So Claudio, for those of you that aren't familiar, um, I'm sure you are, you'll see him as uh, Dido in the chat. He is uh, one of our visionary founders. You know, he's the, one of the people that's wanted this to, to come to fruition. And, you know, here we are over a year on with the pro league. So uh, make sure you get questions in for Claudio, you know, nice warm welcome for him would be fantastic. And Greg, uh, another person you're probably very familiar with in our Discord, he's our operations director. He's here, he'll be taking you through some, through some of the presentation. He'll also be uh, taking some questions at the end. So again, you know, make sure you get questions in for him, for Claudio, or we can see whoever it fits to chat with. Uh, we've also got in attendance, Pierre, the game director himself. So, you know, he's been very busy the last couple of days answering your questions and he'll continue to be uh, in the Discord along with us. So uh, again, you know, a welcome to him and make sure we're uh, getting the questions in as we go. Uh, and we've got a couple of other pooky people knocking around the chat, as you'll see, like Jonathan, a lot of these visuals, they've come through him. So thanks to him for that. Uh, you'll see, you'll start seeing the vision that we're bringing together. And for those of you that aren't familiar, I'm sure you are. I'm Nacho or Nick. Uh, I do our videos. I'm here around socials on our, on our Twitter and things like that. So uh, like, you know, bring any questions. We're here to help. We're here to talk you through. We want you to understand the vision and where it's going. So I think without further ado, I will hand the mic over to Claudio and he is going to get started on the presentation. Thank you, Nick, for the uh, very nice uh, introduction. And indeed, uh, yeah, thank you for all the team. Uh, we have been working uh, very hard on this uh, big update, like it's showing uh, on the screen. Uh, like Nick said, we really appreciate uh, all your feedback. And uh, mainly today we are here to uh, give a quick run through on the on the update. I'm sure you already uh, read all the, the blogs. Uh, the white paper has been released today. I saw that uh, some of you already read it and had uh, quite a few comments, suggestions, idea. So the idea is here to do a, a quick explanation and uh, at the end mainly uh, listen to your question, listen to your feedback and uh, understand how you perceive things, what are your fears, what are your question, what is not clear. And yeah, take all your feedback so that we can uh, uh, work it out over the next few months and then have a very nice and great release and onboard you uh, into this new game around uh, mid of August. But that, that's the moment where we want to do the transition. So uh, we can move to the, the next uh, slide. And uh, mainly the one of the biggest change, as you know, is the shift from uh, Pokeballs towards uh, League Passes. So uh, I saw the question on the, on Discord on why are you doing this? Why is this happening? Why is it a good, uh, a good evolution? Uh, I just want to take you one step back and just get the bigger picture uh, on, over Pokeball versus League Pass and understand what are we trying to achieve with Pookie. So since we launched it with, uh, with Stefano, my brother, which is also the co-founder, we had this vision that we wanted to revolutionize and change sport betting, offer a true alternative, because today sport betting for us is totally rigged, uh, still evolving, but it has something that is totally flawed, and we wanted to uh, bring something new. And that was our main motivation. And one of the things we want to keep doing is then bringing this product to the masses. And to do this, uh, we want to enable play, make it easy for people to onboard and get uh, the transition and do the transition from sport betting towards Web3 gaming and gaming more generally speaking. So we decided to build an app. Uh, we decided also to build a free to play, which will be released uh, in the month of May with the idea to really make it easier for people to shift and do this transition, understand the new gameplay, being able to be educated towards the, the, the Web3 uh, concept. Top of that, we wanted to uh, eliminate all the frictions around blockchain. We are a Web3 game and we're going to stay a Web3 game because you see that we want to introduce our native token, but we wanted to make it easy on the onboarding side by remove all the complexity around blockchain. And if we have some time at the end, I will be happy to uh, deep dive into, into more of that. 
Now, the fourth element that we wanted to remove and one of the barriers of entry is the energy issue, because energy was one of the main blocker on the pro version of the game. The, the bridge between the fact of the possibility to predict one league and going to the second league, it was a gap way too big for many of the players. And that was one of the biggest hurdle that we heard from the, the community and also from people that were put off in joining at first hand because they said, I don't have the budget to go to the next league, so why join even for the, for the first one? Now, uh, just removing the energy, it would have been too much of an easy solution. And unfortunately, that uh, didn't work because the whole system, you have to see the whole game design on which Pierre and our uh, game designer worked on was all tied up and interconnected and intertwined between all the different elements. So just removing it was not possible. So the other solution that we saw and we wanted is to indeed make it more accessible for players to predict not only one league, but two leagues, potentially three leagues. So that's why we went uh, on with the idea of a, a league pass per league as per the definition of it. And maybe on the next slide, you can see that we also, beside uh, moving and making that shift towards the league pass, we introduced also an extra rarity. Now it's called Uncommon. I saw on Discord that uh, the naming uh, has created a bit of uh, confusion or misunderstanding, but the idea was to lower down the uh, access um, price. So now we went from $25 to $19 and at the same time, keep more or less the same level for the max rarity that you can purchase, which in this case is the legendary around $1,600. So we introduced an extra rarity and instead of having a multiplying factor of four between the different pricing, now it's reduced to uh, three. Uh, what you have to see, the uncommon is to some extent the, the new rare. The rare is the new epic. And, uh, and saying this, the epic is the new uh, legendary in a way. So you cannot compare uh, the, the passes based on the naming. You need to take into account that we have introduced this extra rarity. We heard what you said, and maybe for simplification, we uh, can work on, on, an, on, on a different naming to take that into account so that it's more clear and more straightforward and less confusing for the, for the players. Now, the next big thing, of course, is how do we do this transition? Because indeed, like you said, it's not a small transition. It's still something big, and we acknowledge that shifting from Pokeball and League Pass is something quite major. Uh, to make it fair, uh, we said, uh, we, we thought a lot also on, you know, how to do it, um, converting a Pokeball into a League Pass, but each player had like his own specific situation. It would have been very complicated to find one rule that would have suited all. So the easiest uh, for us was to say, okay, um, you have invested that much in Puki. You have invested that much time, so taking into account the progression, also what you have spent, so spent in time, but also in investment, take all that into account, basically do a snapshot of the value of your assets, and then give you a credit in valued in dollar, a sort of voucher that you can then spend into the new game and uh, decide to redeploy the capital, uh, the value of your asset currently, redeploy them into the new game in the way you want. You might want to specialize in one league, so invest and deploy all your capital in one, or on the contrary, uh, diversify and decide to spread uh, your, uh, your credits into uh, different leagues and allow you then to predict on the different leagues. So this is the way uh, we, uh, we choose, which is like really, uh, really uh, fair to some extent. And here on this slide, Thanks, Nick. You can see uh, the valuation that we gave to the assets, uh, level zero, and also the maximum level. So the maximum level is, of course, taking into account the progression and the time that you have spent. So we are valuing the time uh, that you have spent uh, on Pookie. Uh, same for the Pokeball, the stickers, uh, but also the energy, which is not on the slide. Uh, I think for each point of energy, we value it at $3.7. Pierre, correct me if I'm wrong on this one. So everything that you have spent uh, in money and in time is being valued for the transition towards a new game. And that's something really important to be mentioned. Now, uh, this is an extra uh, bonus. 
not only we value the the time and the effort and the money that you have invested, but also we reward the fact uh, that you have been joining us on the early stage. So for everyone that holds a Genesis uh, Pokeball, uh, their asset will be valued 10% on top of what you have seen on the on the previous slide. And this is based mainly uh, because of what we have uh, been reading over the past few days uh, on, on Discord, which we found indeed fair that people that had uh, that are with us for more than a year would have this special asset uh, extra, slightly extra valued. Time line. Uh, I'll give the the mic to Greg. He was ready to uh, in the starting block to jump over. He'll tell you more on the timeline and on the and some uh, details on the gameplay. Um, and a quick, uh, I don't think we already updated the simulator with Genesis unless Pierre has done it. I don't know if he can nod on it if he's not yet. Not yet. So, guys, don't worry. We'll update it uh, probably by tomorrow. Uh, we'll try to find an extra way to include uh, the option to select Genesis or not, and that basically will then also reflect the value in the simulator we built for you guys. So, we'll update you, of course, uh, in a. In, uh, on Discord once uh, it's done. So timeline-wise, guys, um, just to explain, because we are now in April or April 4th, uh, there is still four and a half months, uh, give or take, uh, before uh, the Pro League, uh, or at least the updated Pro League will start. What will happen till then? So uh, from today, or at least since Tuesday, since we announced the change, up till game week uh, 87, nothing will change. Uh, basically, you will keep earning Matic uh, as today. You will keep earning Pokas today. And that's basically 15 more game weeks for a total of a minimum total of 120K Matic. As you can also, uh, have, as you might have seen on the marketplace, we're still, um, uh, with the discount that we proposed, uh, a lot of assets are still being sold on the marketplace. This will keep on increasing the, the price pool still then. Um, and then we also saw the 20% discount I mentioned. For 15 game weeks, we have the 120K Matic Steel minimum that will be given and shared out as rewards. But also, after game week 87, one month before we make the transition, it will be a POC only system. Uh, and we'll replace Matic with uh, POC. And that basically comes down to a multiplier of around 1.66%. Uh, 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 if you want to know the math, you can always check with Pierre on this one. Uh, it's a very complex formula, but in the end, like that's how we can value based on everything that we're valuing uh, our assets to and then the whole economic, economical pyramid. That's how we can basically value our POC into this new system. And basically for five weeks, you guys will then have the time to really finish up your plan to value your account as much as possible. And that's also a big aim in announcing this transition as early as possible. So that basically players still have time to continue playing the game as, they, as they've been playing so far in the game that they love. Basically reaping and still collecting rewards, but also giving them enough time if they want to maximize some balls or stickers, basically making some ascensions and basically getting ready for when, when the snapshot will happen. The exact date of the snapshot, it's impossible to confirm just yet. We estimate it to be around mid-August and you'll know more or less uh, in July, will confirm the exact date of the snapshot, most probably. But basically, uh, the current estimates are around week 32, week 33 in, uh, in August. That's around mid-August. We'll then do a snapshot and probably a few days or maybe depending on how the, the, the tech team is, is, is moving forward, that matter. But really quickly after the snapshot is done, you'll then have, you will see the credit stored on your uh, Pookie account. Um, and you'll then be able to spend on the marketplace like any other players and any other, any other new coming players. Important to, to, uh, to let you guys know. Um, and then again, Pierre, tell me if I'm wrong there because I might be a bit hesitant, but your account will be the same one that you have in the, in the mobile app that will be released in uh, May, which is build the free to play. So we'll just be able to collect your same account and your, your credit will be stored on that account. So it will be extremely it should be very, be extremely seamless in your experience that you will, you will encounter in August when we're doing the transition. So um, now let's maybe take some time to uh, explain some uh, updates regarding the gameplay. So the first part is that Puki is a game where you can make predictions and you can basically boost uh, your points. We are it's a it's an odds based prediction game. Uh, we are using real life, real time, real life, and sometimes even real time odds. Uh, for you to be on the points that you earn, you can boost them 
with the assets that you have in game. That part of the game is not changing at all. That's kind of like the core system of the game. And of course, as you've already known uh, in the previous, um, in the previous, uh, in the current game right now, with a lot of different strategies that you can apply to basically get the most out of your predictions. Um, and regarding the leak passes, Nick, if you move to the next slide, the function of a leak pass is very similar to Pokeball. It's the same system. The name is different, but you will still have attributes that you can basically upgrade. There's still, still going to be a leveling system. You'll still be able to ascend them. And as you know today, you'll still be able to attach stickers to it. So the, the sticker system that is very successful currently will basically carry over to the new game. It will be new stickers because we're basically doing a relaunch. We cannot just transfer the existing stickers to the current game because there are many more changes that would make them basically incompatible. But it's going to be a very similar system. Uh, it's going to be the same essential stick. Like if you read the white paper, you'll see it's very familiar. It's very similar. Of course, we'll introduce a lot of new stickers. Uh, so there will be a, a lot of fun new stickers that be, be, people be, basically will be able to, uh, to play with. But that will not be different. However, there is one, one major difference. Clubs won't be part anymore of stickers. We've all also seen that most people are interested by... I, Club stickers do have some success, but most people are turned to something different. But we do see that people do love to collect clubs, do love to actually go in that territory. Uh, and that people also value, for example, certain pokeballs with certain clubs. And that's why we basically intro are introducing a new system, which are team boosters. Nick, if you go to the next slide. So basically, every league pass will allow you to collect all the clubs of that same league. Uh, here, this example is the Premier League. So the Premier League this season is 20, uh, 20 teams. Next season will still be 20 teams. Of course, if a team gets relegated, you'll keep that booster and you'll have new teams. So it's possible that after a couple of seasons, you might have more clubs uh, than the 20 teams. But basically, you will be able to collect those teams. And each time you collect some more clubs, you will increase your booster. How does that work? For every exact score that you'll do involving those two teams, you'll basically collect... Uh, uh, those team boosters and of course the more you collect the bigger your booster uh, again I invite you guys to check the white paper uh, where we have a link towards the Google Sheets that basically showcases the whole ladder of evolution of your, of your, of your clubs but you can go up to 40% extra boosting points if you go to the max level uh, and that's optimistic maybe at some point Pierre will decide to also allow players to go up to ultimate but again uh, try to already get to mythical it will already be a uh, uh, a, a big journey. Um, so that's the way that we work for collecting teams. Um, you'll also be able to uh, collect uh, those teams from the marketplace uh, in the same way that you'll be able to, uh, to, uh, to buy uh, league passes from the marketplace. So that's the first big change. So league passes function the same way as Pokeballs today with stickers that you can attach. The main difference from stickers today is that clubs won't be part of it. You'll be able to collect them uh, and you'll be rewarded by gameplay and by doing exact scores. Uh, on your league passes. Then, the next uh, introduction I want to make is consumables. So, right now, you have a lot of, like, if you, if you compare it to the current game, the current game, you can do a lot of stuff regarding your leads and uh, regarding how you, you want to function. But what is maybe missing and what we feel kind of like is a really in interesting introduction and interesting feature is allowing players to basically have an impact at the game level. Um, and basically allowing them to use consumables, so basically it's like a sticker but with a, with a, but a one-time use, and basically being able to use a certain consumer on a certain game you have a lot of confidence on and maybe make a difference. I can already see players uh, wanting to maybe uh, get some more rankings for an end game and applying some, uh, some really tough consumables to basically get an edge, uh, or maybe deciding on a specific strategy, so that really will enhance the depth of the strategies and the depth of how basically people will play Puki and how people will basically uh, uh, encounter the game. So it really opens up a lot of new strategies. That's really interesting uh, feature that we're introducing here and I hope you guys are very excited about it. Then, so I just mentioned that you can now have an impact on your, at league level with your league passes. You can have an impact at the game level through the team boost that they can collect and through the consumables. And we're also going to launch a new feature that will allow players to build strategies at account level. What I mean with account level, it will have an impact on all of your league passes. So if you own a couple of league passes, whatever you do at your account level will have an impact on all those different league passes. 
Um, and then the way it will work, very easy, again, when you do exact scores, we really want to reward players that are trying to find those exact scores uh, and trying to really uh, find the, do the predictions as they would do in sport betting, for example, really like, of course, we are always happy when someone can find an upset, but uh, we don't find it interesting when people only predict four ones. Sometimes I do the same, but I mean, it's not really interesting. Uh, we really want to reward players that actually play the game and, and try to find the right scores. And there, again, if you do an exact score, you'll be rewarded with account XP. And that account XP, you'll be able to basically invest into our newly uh, introduced skill tree. And there, it will be interesting because you will have to make some tough choices on what kind of skills you want to invest in uh, and what kind of skill tree you want to develop to unlock specific uh, skills that have, will have an impact on your game, uh, not only boosting, but it might be uh, some, uh, some, some tough choice or some things that will basically really will help you in your strategy. Again here, uh, Pierre has built a really interesting simulator. This is not, again, if you guys go look in white paper and can find a simulator, this is not an end game or final version. This is just a way for you guys to understand how it will function. So don't take uh, the skill that you can see there as kind of like definite, definitely not. It's just an example for you to understand how this new feature will function um, once, um, once it's released. Um, and then um, last but not least, and I know uh, players have been asking this, we are going to, we're going to introduce new letterboards. Uh, they're going to be weekly letterboards, those ones you guys know. Uh, so per uh, league pass and so per league, you will have a, a, a weekly ranking that will give you rewards, but we'll also now go for a monthly letterboard. Why? We really believe that sometimes you might have a bad week, but you might be actually very good at predicting overall. And so sometimes the average player can actually be much better than someone who just does do a spike. And so we do believe that introducing monthly letterboards with rewards is going to be an interesting way to, uh, for players to, uh, to also kind of like chase uh, uh, the constants uh, of their scores. Um, and we'll also have letterboards per rarity. Uh, that's also something that players have been re re requesting a lot. Uh, and of course, um, we're going to use a lot of social new elements as well. Uh, we'll have uh, groups, so private and public letterboards. Uh, I know people have been uh, really wanting to be able to invite their friends and play together in a, in a closed environment or public if you want to, uh, to, uh, to build a, a league or letterboard uh, of, your, of your choosing which a bigger part of your community, but also Hall of Fame, so basically based on your best stats. So, for example, we already have, we sometimes make a joke, but uh, when a, a common player beats all legendary players, well, typically these kind of things, we definitely want to build a Hall of Fame to basically uh, allow people to brag depending on a specific performance they've done in, uh, in game. Um, and so, uh, before we go to the next slide, Nick, just uh, one important element I want to mention, and I'm sure Claudia will be able to repeat afterwards, is that we're introducing a lot of new updates here, but we also have a free-to-play uh, app version that will be released in May. And it's important to understand that all these new features um, will be able to balance them out, will be able to understand exactly also how players are going to in interact with those features. And that knowledge will be very key for us, of course, to understand basically how the game will evolve. And so whatever you guys see here, this is more or less where we're going. I mean, but things can still be adapted. Uh, and that will be based on players' feedback, uh, based on you guys actually discovering uh, this new uh, updated gameplay when the free-to-play is going to be released. That's a very important part to share. So uh, I think uh, it's back to Claude now. We will talk about uh, the introduction of our native token. Uh, so I'll leave the floor back to Claudio. Thank you. Uh, yes, my mic is on. Thank you, Greg. Uh, indeed, uh, I think the TPK is uh, the last uh, major big update uh, that we are sharing with you uh, uh, this week. Uh, so as you know, uh, if you have been reading carefully uh, the first white paper, it has always been, uh, you know, uh, our goal to launch our native token. Actually, we wanted to launch it even earlier. The plans were to launch it in, uh, within the, the first year in 23, uh, the idea. Uh, but uh, before launching a token, we said, OK, let's take a more safer approach. First, build a game to have something with real utility, because a lot of previous games, they would launch a token before even having a game. So we decided that this wouldn't, wouldn't be the, the way to go. So first, we wanted to build a game. Uh, validate that people would like the gameplay because that's really important. 
uh, test our mechanics, implement different sync mechanics, utilities for the token, and these are some of the mechanics that we, we tested with the POC. We also saw that some people were a bit frustrated with the, the, with the POC because people say, said like, I miss POCs, I would like to have more POCs, and it would be amazing if I could buy some more POCs, and that was also a limitation, but it was an assumed limitation in the current gameplay because we didn't want the uh, outside market to uh, impact the, the the very early stages uh, of our gameplay. And now we feel that we reach a certain maturity, adding this to a few more months because the idea is not to launch the token today, not yet in uh, in uh, in August. First, we want to do the transition, uh, iron out a few things, and before the end of the year, uh, launch and introduce uh, the, the native token. So that's more or less for the for the timeline. Uh, if we move to the next slide, you will see our targeted uh, allocation. There is a, something very important here is that we wanted to distribute most of the tokens to you, the players. Because by doing this, you allow first that uh, the, the, the play, the, 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 how do you say, the, the value goes to the player. And that's our main priority. Second important point, uh, is that of course, uh, if you distribute most of the, the rewards via the gameplay, it means that a lot of people will own the token. So you have a distribution and a wide spreading between a lot of different wallets, ensuring stability. You don't want one person to concentrate all the token. I saw a lot of comments on Discord were saying, yeah, what happens if one person then sells all the token? By implementing such a distribution, you already minimize the risk. Of course, there's never a risk zero because there can be always somebody starting to buy uh, everything on the on the centralized exchange or a decentralized exchange and at some moment sell it but by implementing such strategy you minimize uh, this uh, this risk uh, and uh, that's important for us and i want to note that we are way above the benchmark in gaming uh, within gaming usually it's around 40 percent that is giving back to the community we commit to at least 50 percent the other amounts are uh, placeholder, and of course, if we're able uh, to distribute a bit more, we'll do it. Uh, for example, you have the marketing side. So on the marketing, some amount will also go to incentivization of the player. So in the end, more than 50% of the, the, the token allocation will go back to you. So then you have also a certain responsibility in, uh, in the evolution of the price of the token. Of course, if tomorrow we distribute all the tokens, you decide, oh, together to sell it, of course, it will have an impact negative. But if you believe in the vision and more people will join our community, there will be more people holding the token and that creates a, ba a bigger base and more stability for the price of the token. Then you add on top of this, uh, the game mechanics, the utilities around the token. Why Why should I have the token? Why? What can I do with this token? All those things introducing. So there is like an incentive to not only just hold the token, but also spend the token, because that will allow you to progress within the game and then potentially have a bigger shot on the next uh, on the next uh, leaderboard. I think that's enough for the token. Of course, I'm happy to uh, answer any question on that specific topic. Now, if you go to the, the roadmap, so an important thing uh, indeed in April to reward here also the early joiners, because that's a special discount that players that are playing Pookie today or that will start playing Pookie until uh, the end of August will benefit. As of August, the new pricing will be implemented and there will be no more discounts. So this is a exceptional perk that anybody that is within the game uh, can benefit. So it's a perk, uh, an advantage for you. Uh, basically, you get a 10% discount. What does it mean? Actually, it's even a 20% discount uh, yeah, because we put 10%, hours, but it's a 20%. Because I was like, okay, that's not enough. We gave we gave more. We gave 20%. Uh, basically, what does it mean if I take an example of a common Pokeball? Because that's easy. The official price or standard price before the update was $25. Now we have a discount of 20%. So we're giving, we're selling them at around $20. But if you understood well what we said for the transition, we're going to do a snapshot of your assets. And any Pokeball will be from level zero will be at least valued at $25. Then if you have done some progression, it will be valued, of course, more. So you have four or five months to do this. So probably it will be worth more than $25. So that means that in the new game, you get a free 
uh, extra credit of at least five dollars for any Pokeball that you've bought. And this is applicable, of course, to any other Pokeball or sticker that you're buying because we're applying the same uh, discount overall. May is a very, very important month, it's the month where we want to launch the free to play version. It's not exactly as the Pro, of course, because in, when you move to the Pro, you should have more features, but it has the, the basis of play that will be played in the Pro. Uh, mainly, you will be able to test the, the consumables. I saw a lot of worry in uh, people saying, ah, it's going to be a lot of work. I will have to uh, do more than what I do today. What I can say here is that we have already a, a very early stage internal testing version, and we have been testing internally, and it's really not a pain to do it. Actually, it's really it's really fun because you have a lot of diversity. You can decide to play. You can also decide not to play them. The consumable will also accumulate from one week to another, so no pressure, not obliged to use everything immediately. You can save it for the end of the game week. If you see that you are in a good position, if you can strike uh, something very nice on the leaderboard, then you can play and be more tactical about it. It really adds some extra uh, fun element, and I'm sure 100% convinced that you will like it the moment that you have it in, uh, in your hands. So I can't wait uh, to hit May and uh, so that you're in a position to download the app. Now, July, uh, June, July, that's the moment where you have the Euro Cup. So I think it's going to be a, a very fun month. Uh, for all uh, uh, all football fans, uh, no matter what. And uh, we're working towards the transition mid-July. So just after the final of the Euro Cup, we will stop uh, with rewarding with the Matic, but that still means that for the next 15 weeks, you, you have a Matic distribution. The pop distribution will increase. So that's a moment where you need to, I mean, you should level up all uh, your assets uh, as much as possible. Because in August, mid of August or end of August, the date is still to be defined. It depends on our progression on the on the uh, on, well, the internal progression on the development of the uh, of the app. And at that moment, we'll do the snapshot, like uh, Greg said. We'll value the assets based on the simulator that we provided you, plus the 10% for the Genesis uh, Pokeballs. And uh, immediately after. Uh, you will be able to connect uh, in the pro version or your account, if you already created your account uh, during the free version, you will be credited the value uh, of your collection in uh, uh, dollars that you can then spend uh, within the app. It's important to say that those dollars, you cannot cash them out. So it's really a credit, a voucher that you can then spend. You're not obliged to spend it immediately, but you can only spend it within uh, the, the new version of the of the game. Now, this brings us to the end of August. Uh, we still keep working. And soon after, we're going to introduce a few more features to complement and get the full scope of the uh, uh, pro version of the game. And then slightly introducing trading option, uh, the option on the possibility to trade the NFTs, first just internally, then also externally. And then ultimately, we're going to end up uh, the year with uh, with something big it's the listing of uh, the tpk so we really hope to have you all there uh, we're considering doing also a uh, uh, public sale with a private access so of course uh, you will be uh, on the line to uh, to join on that uh, this private sale uh, when we're going to do it uh, probably in q4 and definitely the idea is to launch the token before the end of the year we are aiming at the latest uh, by the end of november to do it White paper, if you haven't read it uh, and you have some time to do it uh, in the next few days, I, I really uh, heavily recommend to do it. Um, I also, we, we, you know, we really open to feedback, but it's really important that, you know, read it so that you get a good understanding. And, and then we will really, we will really appreciate uh, your feedback uh, on, uh, on the different mechanics. Uh, like we said, uh, this is on paper. We're currently fine-tuning the free version. We're going to test it out. So everything that you see on paper uh, has already a certain degree of development, but it's not fully frozen. So we're totally open to suggestion and see how we can improve uh, this game, uh, because in the end, this game is uh, not for us, uh, partially actually, but it's mainly uh, a game for you. Questions? 
So just before we jump into questions, so I can see some have been going on in the um, in the chat, but just to sort of summarize, guys, so we've kind of gone through everything, given a bit of a walkthrough again. Uh, Claudio, you know, as he mentioned there, you know, read the white paper, take a minute, you know, it's, you, you need to read it through. You need to, you know, the reason we released the comms first and then the white paper, it gave you something digestible to see the vision because a white paper, I mean, I don't originally come from the Web3 world where white papers weren't for me. Some of you are going to be similar. You know, it's laid out in a different way. So use the, the blog, the information to kind of get the picture of what we, you know, the things that we've talked through today. Then have a look, you know, the questions you've got go through feel the white paper and then jump back in discord you know we're all here we're all answering your questions all the time so um i think i, I can see some of the questions have been getting answered um if there's there was one that i saw to do with uh the token about what it can be uh spent on so i just want to make sure because i appreciate not everyone's going to be reading the chat uh, some of you are so one of the questions came in saying what can you use the new token for in game pierre i know you gave an answer on that do you want to just give a verbal answer as well because obviously this is going to be a recording for people to watch uh, afterwards as well so if you could just give us a bit of insight that'd be great oh not get your sound you're not muted from what i can see maybe still not uh it's okay i can uh I don't know uh, uh, Claudia, you want to answer or you want me to do it you, you go on take it uh, right. Right. So basically uh, as you know today uh, players are already spending buck to do a level up you can also spend money if you want but there are a lot of mechanics in game today to progress where you're using buck. it will be the same thing with tpk where basically tpk will be the main in-game currency so whatever Whenever you want, will want to upgrade your assets, stickers, uh, league passes, and every other option that you will have in game, uh, uh, want to maybe go a bit faster on some progressions uh, on your skill tree, that's where TPK comes in. Um, and, um, and that's where you'll be able to spend your TPK. Of course, you'll also be able to convert your TPK to, uh, to uh, the US. Like right now, we're talking US dollar. It might be euros, because if you have a lot of European, you might move to euros, but basically it's talking US dollar. You'll be able to convert your TPK to US dollars and then spend those amounts back on the marketplace so to, to create a full circle. But that's the idea, basically, that uh, TPK will replace whatever you know today from Matic and Pocky will replace that whole concept and all spendings will be in there. So you never forget as well, sometimes when you feel some numbers are a bit high, like it's basically Matic and Pock all together. Um, and that's a very important element to, uh, to understand. Pierre, I don't know if now it works. Uh, try to explain the spendings myself, but if your mind now works. Let's try. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it works yeah. on the web and not on, uh, on the, the app, whatever. Uh, I didn't catch your answer because I had to change device. So I cannot complete it. But the main thing I want to say is basically there's two parts uh, on the things. There's things that will be labeled only in either the token or its re replica. That's basically some progression spending, some specific spending. And then if you want to buy generic items from marketplace, uh, the token will also be convertible to basically vouchers. So, but that's basically the gist of it. And for the detail of all of the spending possible, I think it's better to read the, the white paper. Yeah, again, with any questions that you guys have, honestly, jump into the white paper as well. There's some good info. Uh, another question that I think is a good one. Uh, it comes from Tweaks. For upgrading the league pass, do we need TPK? Who wants to jump in on that one? I guess for me again, yeah. uh, so you do not uh, need TPK to uh, level it up. You will level it up only with XP. So basically, it's only PXP uh, to, to, to compare it to the current game. Uh, you would only get PXP. So you get PXP when you play correctly. This PXP allows you to level. And when you level, you can spend uh, level points into your attributes. Uh, however, you'll be able to use the TPK to progress faster. So you'll be able to get two or three times more XP, uh, up to two or three times more XP if you spend TPK, but that's a player choice if you want to to accelerate your progression. Thank you, Pierre. Um, okay, a good one here from, I think it's from Hardy Street. I've got my streamer mode on so that I don't have to redact everyone's names. Um, but uh, Hardy Street asks, do you think it'll be easy in the future to have a market like now? Uh, like he's saying, I'm free to sell Pokeball because every Pokeball has its skills. Will it be see the same with League Passes? And I'll just quickly, one thing from my point of view, because 
as much as I've been here from Pookie at the beginning, guys, I've also, well, the same as all of us, really. Me and Greg have been heavily involved in playing the game and getting into it. And I remember when we released the original Pookie Balls and everything, that kind of question you've asked there, Hardy Street, is kind of the same. Like, they weren't necessarily selling at the beginning because it was a it was a new thing, a new concept. The trust had to be built. The reason stickers sell, the reason Pookie Balls sell now is because of, well, we understand the game more. People have started coming up with strategies and tactics. And so for me, I don't see any reason why it won't actually be probably a bit more buoyant because we've got all of our, or I mean, I'm looking at it from a player point of view here. I've got all of my knowledge of what I've built up till now. And then when we move into the new one, we're going to need to re, like build our knowledge again. But a lot of the mechanics are the same. Lots of things are similar. So I think we're going to see a similar thing happen um, within the market. But I don't know if, Greg, maybe I feel like you'll have a good insight on, on this, one. this one. Well, again, it's a personal opinion, of course, because we'll see exactly how the market will behave, uh, as, as Nick just mentioned. But um, the thing with Pookie Balls is kind of like, Yes, you have clubs and you have these, but at some point it's actually not that difficult to find a pookie ball that is very similar to yours, excluding Genesis balls that are limited in quantity. But with league passes and your ability to basically improve the quality of league passes with the exact score that you'll reach and basically improving already clubs inside it, like, that's basically something that is very unique and basically will massively um, uh, improve the quality of your league pass, whatever the level, if you're good at predicting it. That's kind of like a first part. Um, and that's something that you'll not, you won't be able to kind of like invent it any, anywhere. And to me, that's going to be a lot of value, like even a, a, a path that is kind of like low grade, if you want to make sure that you have a head start with some specific clubs that are much more difficult to predict that, and you are that player, it will bring value to, uh, to, your, um, to your league pass, which might be easier to sell it downwards towards another player, if that's what you want to do. Um, and just to the point on league passes, actually, it jumped into my mind there. We've developed, everyone's developed their skills the way they have over the last year. I used to go for um, certain score lines accidentally. I loved 2-1. It just seemed when I naturally was trying to predict. But one thing I didn't mind was missing exact scores. Whereas talking about the quality of a league pass in the new world, in the new game, actually for the people that are landing more exacts, when it comes to deciding you want to trade it, sell it, whatever, you're going to have more teams on there. You are going to, so you are going to have a Liverpool league. If you happen to be really good at predicting Liverpool games and Man United games and stuff, you're going to start generating the quality of the league pass yourself by nailing the exacts because the more exacts you get, the more leagues you get, uh, the more teams you get equally, you know, as, as you know, we're also bringing the passes in. Um, okay. Another question I saw, uh, sorry, the names redacted out for me. Are the rarities separated in the leaderboards? Rare players against rare players, common against common, or is it mixed like now? Um, Claudio, do you want to, I feel like you you could take this one. Take yes, this one. sure. Uh, the, 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 the answer is both. Uh, you have a mixed leaderboard uh, on, the, on the match day level between all rarities. You have a monthly leaderboard again between uh, all the rarities, so everybody's mixed up, similar as today uh, in the sort of format. Uh, but on top of that, we have added special leaderboards uh, based on rarity so that anyone within uh, a certain rarity has a possibility to win a leaderboard. I mean, of course, you can still win a leaderboard also on the match day level and those seasons if you, uh, if you play it well, if you're good at predicting, because, you know, at the end of the day, you still need to predict correctly a score. It doesn't just matter of like how, how strong your league, uh, your league pass is. So the answer is uh, uh, yes. Um, you uh, you predict uh, with other uh, rarity, but there is also uh, a leaderboard per rarity. So you're going to compete if you're a common. You compete only with uh, commons on each uh, for each league. Huh? If I'm not mistaken, Pierre. Yeah, I believe that to be correct. Correct. Um, yeah. So, so, so I think. No, no, no. Go on, Claudio. Finish up. No, I just wanted to say that uh, I think it's uh, it's really exciting, and that's a that's a big addition compared to uh, today, where you just have one leaderboard per league. So it was a challenge actually for. Uh, I think we have a slide where you can see a, a bit of the leaderboard. It was a challenge for our designers to fit. Um, well, I don't know how many leaderboards now we have, but we have twelve leagues. Uh, you have more than uh, you have like three leaderboards. You have also the seasonal leaderboard, but that one won't distribute rewards, and we have also glory rankings who has more points overall since the inception of the game so it was a uh, quite challenging to fit all those leaderboards within the within the app you can see that we have introduced a feature 
the summary one where you could you will be able in one glimpse very fast that's also an improvement compared to today because today you have to switch navigate in the app it's complicated you're gonna have in on one glance be able to see the, all the leagues where you're participating your ranking on the match day the monthly and the and the season part that's for the free part we haven't designed the pro part so the the rarity element will be also added on the screen yeah, thanks for that, Claudia. Yeah, so a good one, guys. I mean, the the main essence is going to be the weekly leaderboards. That's where the biggest distribution is going to be. Then it's going to filter down to the monthly, so it comes to that consistency. But also, like something me and Greg have done from time to time over the past year, but it's been time consuming, is we have gone through trying to find the highest ranked common rare and so on but uh with the system just wasn't set up at the time so it's something that's been at the forefront you guys have asked for it um so it's been a really really big thing to bring forward i i love the concept of it because i want to make sure that i get the tag at some point you know playing with the common as as i do now uh, of getting that tag it's going to be something i hunt for trying to win some of them um, a good question here, actually, from Volut. I think it's Volut. I'm, I recognize the picture. Private leagues with our friends are free as rival leaderboards now. Is uh, is there not a... Hang on, let me get there. Is no question now. To, are you able to create a private league with POC and any players that want to participate and pay TPK price too? So it's a controversial question. Uh, I don't know who wants to jump in on that. Um, I'll let Claudio, Greg, or Pierre. Pierre. Uh, I, can, I can take it. So the idea, uh, we're going to introduce a feature which is called groups, and you can create a private or public groups. So you can decide to lock the group or just make it open so that anybody uh, that is browsing within uh, the, the group uh, section can find uh, your group and enter it. Uh, for now, it's just for fun. Uh, so basically, it's a leaderboard uh, filter leaderboard with the the players that are uh, well with, with whom you are connected and are joined participating in that group. Uh, there is not yet a possibility to uh, to uh, add a, a sort of stake uh, because you could really um, very I mean the, the the line with gambling and betting is uh, very thin. So we would have to study that if there is a way. Uh, maybe it depends on the number of players, you know, if it's under a certain amount of player, there, there might be a possibility. I know that in some countries it's possible, but some other in other countries it's not possible. So we enter into a very uh, sensitive and touchy area. But uh, definitely, uh, if we can do it, it would be something really great because uh, it would be amazing if we could have private group where you can decide and define whatever mini reward pool and create your own sub uh, Sub uh, sub reward pool and, uh, and sub competition. So, I mean, I think it's a it's a could be an amazing feature, but it needs to to fit legally so that we don't uh, fall into uh, into gambling because that's what we we want to avoid uh, from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, look, guys, if any of you play FPL, you know, you might have your own your own ways of playing it. You you, you we're giving you the opportunity to create your own groups, and certainly something I'm going to be using with with you guys on discord on twitter and things like that so there's also an opportunity for you to be fun with it we've wanted to have this feature for a while but there's been lots of things that we've needed to focus on so it's going to be honestly one of the i genuinely think even though there's no rewards on it i think it's gonna be one of the best ones that we bring um i have got a question apologies it's redacted it for me um rarity leaderboards will be uh will provide rewards weekly or monthly so when you're the top performing in your rarity weekly, so it's across the leaderboards, but yeah, it should be uh, weekly if I'm not mistaken. So I mean weekly. It's based on the match day. Yeah? So if there are two match days uh, in the same week, uh, you get a double distribution. Yeah. So I assume, um, yeah, like, like Claudio says there. So it's just, I mean, it, it's performance on that match day as opposed to your combined. So yeah, it'll be on the match day. So it'll be on your league, whichever one you go through. Uh, I saw another good question. Um, well, it, I mean, I'm trying not to avoid people's questions and I apologize if I miss them because there's been quite a lot going on and I also see Pierre's jumped in answering. But Swervy, uh, what was wrong with the current game and how have these changes corrected the issue? So we did do this at the beginning. Uh, I don't know if Claudio or Greg, you want to recap on it for maybe if it was missed. Um, but it is, you know, the reason we're here, it, it's a big part of it. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, we, indeed, uh, we, we, we said a lot, I think, at the beginning, but we can restate a few uh, a few elements. Um, you know, what we want to do is onboard uh, thousands of people and ideally make it uh, a game where you have 
millions of players. So we needed to take away uh, a few limitation uh, in the current game. And I think I listed a few. Well, one is, of course, moving mobile so that uh, we become, uh, uh, we have a reach which is like uh, increased just by the, the, the fact that you're on an App Store, Google App Store and, and, uh, and uh, Apple App Store. Um, so that's important. Uh, the fact of creating a free to play so that uh, more people can enjoy it for free. We can educate them, explain them the concept. We had a lot of people signing up uh, on the game, but just by the fact that it was on a, on a, on a desktop, people would open a window, predict, and then there was a difficulty in reaching back to them. So the mobile app uh, will definitely help that. Having an engaging free to play. Uh, is something important. And while building the free-to-play, we were thinking on how to make it engaging. And that's where the ideas of the consumables came up. Because in a free-to-play, you don't want to give a permanent power uh, to any players because otherwise, um, you know, if it's free, people will just power up, power up. And after a few months, if you want to enter into free-to-play, you're just getting beaten up by the person that have been playing longer on the game. So. That's where the idea and the genesis of the consumable uh, came up. And once we were developing it, we were thinking, OK, uh, why not translate this also into uh, the, the, the pro version? So there were a lot of ideas that came along from the development of the free to play, also from the player themselves, basically on the energy. And everything combined made that uh, we felt that there was a really a, a, possibility in improving uh, the situation so that we would have a game that could become really uh, um, you know reach a mass adoption and that's where we want to go so but at the same time uh, changing a game which is built on the blockchain with smart contract it's it's not so flexible um, for changing it and tweaking it and that's also one of the, the other reasons that we want to build a web 2 experience so that it's more flexible you can more easily adapt and change some of the gameplay and push the, the blockchain elements really towards the end of the of the player's experience. So basically, in the new game, uh, you will need to connect your wallet at the end if you want to cash out, if you want to cash out and trade your NFTs, or if you want to cash out the token that you have earned, that's the moment where you need to connect your wallet and eventually pay, pay uh, uh, some gas fees, etc. So really, at the end of your uh, your total experience, because we don't want to create any friction um, at the moment you join us by creating a wallet. No, we just want to bring it towards the end, till a Web3 game, but we want to onboard also people that are not acquainted with the blockchain, so Web3 people, and offer something in between a Web2.5 uh, experience. So I hope I answered the, the, the question. It's a complicated topic. Um, there are a lot of thoughts behind, of course. So, but I'm hoping that the uh, the answer is uh, satisfactory to uh, the person who who asked it. No, I think it's good. I think you're very thorough. I mean, you know, just to something that has been asked of us throughout the past twelve months is this constantly: when are you going to do a mobile app? When are you going to do a mobile app? And you know, there, there was these conversations um, about you know going more mainstream. And at the end of the day, this mobile app is going to really, really help us do that because we have the frictions of being in a day, a, a day where social media is very saturated with influencers, with brands, with brands that don't really have substance. And you guys know, you know, we're a year on since the pro leagues, leagues went live. And so we're at a point where this is an exciting move, but we've taken it also as an opportunity to make things continue in the right direction so i mean as a player i know i work with you know i work with pookie i've obviously been here since quite early november 22 but i've been playing the game and loving the game and it's what you know it's it's also a reason why many of us are still here even in the discord community you guys spend a lot of time in discord um which which keeps us busy but we love it um uh, like so we're we're coming up to seven o'clock now uh, there's another question here uh what happens if all the current legendary pokeball owners just uh, don't decide to buy a legendary league pass as an example wouldn't that mean that epic league passes are more top heavy with players and thus increase the respective prize pool or does the prize pool not depend on the number of players um now who wants to jump in on that one I can give a quick highlight, and then Pierre, you can complement if you feel that we can go deeper into the uh, into the answer. Um, 
we're going to have a, a distribution of, of the reward pool uh, will be calculated per league. So in the end, it doesn't really matter uh, the amount that you're on, like the, the, the league pass that you're spending on, because we take how much has been spent in a, in a certain league. So that's the way the reward pool will be calculated. There will be a minimum. Uh, now I don't remember the amount exactly for each of the leagues so that it doesn't become a bit awkward if there are not enough players. Uh, mainly for the, the the summer leagues because that can happen that you have less people in uh, in those leagues so we guarantee a minimum reward pool for those leagues and the rest is based really on how much people spend in a certain league so if uh, i don't know 50 percent of the player are going to spend uh redeploy uh, their voucher their capital into a specific league 50 percent of the total reward pool will be then allocated to that, that specific league so it's an indirect uh, approximation of the number of players. It's more number of players time uh, how much they invest. Okay, hopefully that was clear. It was clear for me. Um, do I mean we're at seven o'clock? Uh, do we want to take a couple more? Do you want to wrap it up? Where I mean we've yeah, we can take a, we're we can take a few more if they're all... yeah we're still at forty people in the room, which is pretty good. You know, again guys, we really appreciate taking the time to sit with us and and go through this. Um, uh, okay, so I see one from, I think it's from Volu again. We don't need to claim the PXP for the league pass. A player can't stand in a rarity with a max... Hang on, I'm, I'm maybe not reading this well. Uh, we don't need to clean, claim the PXP for the league passes. So he's asking, do we need to claim the PXP for the league passes? Um, no. It will be... I, again, it will be... So there is not a system where you need to basically confirm a level up. Your league pass will level up automatically. Well, you need to confirm, of course, if you want to ascend and go to the next priority, that's what will happen. So there is not a system where you have to invest, in this case, TPK, for example, to confirm a new level. Uh, only XP will be required. Uh, but maybe, and that pair will correct me, you will do need, however, to confirm what you want to invest your level into the attributes. Uh, you, you will not have to do a blockchain claim. You will only have to confirm the level just because, as Greg said, you have the attributes and because you'll be allowed to also purchase extra XP by spending TPK at the moment of level up. So that would be the moment when uh, you're able to get the extra XP, uh, the extra progress that I've been mentioning a bit earlier. So yes, that will be a confirmation, but as it's not a blockchain confirmation, it will be a much lighter uh, process for players. And so for, for players that are, that are basically familiar with, for example, how Sorel works, uh, a lot of what you do in Sorare uh, is still Web3 based, but it's, it's happening off chain, which allows allows for much smoother ex um, um, game experience. And it will be the same with, uh, with the, the mobile app update. So basically, you will still be able to, for example, mint your assets if you want to sell them or trade them on OpenSea, for example. But when you are in the game, basically, you will be able to do things off chain to allow for a much smoother experience. And especially for newcomers, because it's important also to, to remind people that um, I think, I don't know what the stat is, but it's a huge amount of players that we have at Pookie that are basically creating wealth for the first time. And I'm talking about, if I'm not, if not mistaken, it's definitely above 30%. And so we also see that we do need to do a lot of education. It's sometimes not easy for players to basically make the transition to basically buying their first asset because they need to create a wallet. They need to, to bring some magic over. Like there's a lot of hurdles for, for first time newcomers. And so by basically bringing the whole concept uh, or allowing players to play off-chain um, is going to be much easier for people to discover how the game works. Of course, you'll be able to connect your wallet, you'll be able to sync your wallet. That will still be possible, but will not be something that is mandatory for players at first. Uh, and then a second part to it uh, that I was just, no, just going to say. That it's a, sorry, I was just going to say that it's a sort of blockchain on demand, you know. If you want to go fully blockchain, you have the right to connect. And uh, if not, if you don't want to have it immediately, uh, there is no need to do it. You can have really a, a Web2 experience, which really, really smooth. And uh, again, that's really to onboard, uh, you know, uh, thousands of players. We really want to become really huge. And this this app, this game has been proven, has proven that it has the potential. So, and you don't want to create any unnecessary hurdle uh, for people to enjoy what they like to do, predicting uh, the, uh, the predicting the score of the the game that uh, they like and they love. Um, and so, a, f a final point on um, that was from Volute, which I thought was a good one because it was concerning the skill tree, and it you know we've not necessarily gone into a lot of it, and it, it's still it's still early days with it, but it's basically concerning the skill tree. 
the pay player accumulates the points and then puts them on the tree and like what i mean the question is basically how does that process work what does he do with those points um greg or pierre i mean uh what do you do with the points you have in the skill tree yeah, just to, I guess for people, you know, it's a new concept we're introducing. So it might be nice to just give like a little bit of a walkthrough of, of how that might look. Yeah, so there's there's a visual representation in the white paper if you want to play with it. So in the, in the white paper, in the avatar section, the, the skill tree, there's basically a prototype that you can use to, to get your hands on it. But basically, it's uh, when you have points, you can acquire skills. And those skills will uh, affect the entirety of the game. There are some, let's say, generic ones. Uh, for example, things that say you get 2% more points when you predi correctly predict both teams to score. It's akin to some mechanics you know on the stickers today. There are some more systematic ones. For example, uh, you gain 1% more XP on your league pass. And there's some a bit more crazy ones, like if you have the correct score at 90 and the goal is scored after, you still get the correct score. Uh, those will be like, of course, more advanced. Uh, those are just a bunch of of examples, uh, and yeah, we're we're working on the the final uh, talents in the tree, and they will be split into basically three uh, branches, maybe more, maybe less, but that's where our current thinking is, is at. One that is more about score related item, just you get the score, you not you don't look at all of the systems, the consumable, yada yada. One that is more about controlling randomness and one that is more about controlling consumables. Okay. Thanks for that, Pierre. Yeah, it's an exciting concept, honestly. And I think it's actually going to bring a whole new level to the game where um, I think I personally just think it's going to improve what we, what we already know about the game. Um, okay, I've got another question uh, in here, which I think is a good one because it's, it's involving essentially the transition. Uh, and it's... I think it's Anon. I, I, it's redacted, so I can't see it. But again, I recognize it. You're part of the five pop uh, army cadets, aren't you? So uh, I see you there. Don't worry. Uh, once we get the snapshot done, we don't need to own our Pookie Balls anymore. Isn't that correct? So uh, who would like to fix up on that one? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you don't need. You can keep them. Uh, but essentially, after the snapshot, you, you don't need to transfer them to Pookie for the snapshot to happen. We'll just like look at, at the player accounts what's in the player account, and from there do the snapshot. Uh, but you can keep them as a souvenir, or if you want to keep your uh, wallet as, let's say, as light as you can, you can also destroy them. Uh, but that's up to you. That's basically tokens that are in your wallet. Yeah, so I think when um, when it actually happens, that when we've discussed it internally, your Pokeball will get some metadata on it. So you know they've all been claimed and used. They can't be passed around. There can be nothing else going on once they're done. Once, once the snapshot's done and you're moved into the game, that's them done. But let's be honest, I, I've had some for, you know, from the very beginning. I've got number 666, uh, or I had number 666. Uh, like, the, some of these balls are really, really cool. Like, for me, once the snapshot's done, like, I'm not giving them to anyone. They're just going to sit there. When Pookie's, you know, we've got millions of players and we're where we want to be with this game. I still think they're going to have some good legacy. People are going to be interested to see that we've got them on our wallet. So uh, I think it's an exciting thing, guys. Um, I'm just scanning through. Yeah. It doesn't cost anything to keep them. So I would say, yes, keep them. You never know. Something. Uh, sometimes people throw things away and then suddenly they get a lot of value. So keep them. Yeah, you know, they're still artwork. They're still NFTs and they've still got um, they've got legacy. So um, Pookie, this might be Pookie Sports. Um, how many leagues will there be? 12 so 12 leagues in total so go on. yeah for now uh, of course we the, the the system one of the the positive things of the this evolution is that we have a scalable system so we can add pretty much any league we want uh, of course it uh, it costs money and uh, development time to include more so we will do it uh, when it's the, the the right moment so now you're going to have uh, you have the 12 so the five European leagues, the four summer leagues, Champions League, uh, Europa League, and the International League, which combines all games and all events that include uh, nas national teams. And I think that's 12 then, yes. Yes. Air Divisie is on the, on the short list for the next one. Yeah, 
Um, I think that answers that one. There was, where did I see it? How many game weeks, so this is to do with the transition, how many game weeks the reward pool will be 10 million POC? So who wants to take that? It's not well, a... 20, yeah. that's 20 basically. So um, uh, as of, uh, including this one, so we are in game week 72, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and uh, Matic and POC uh, uh, hybrid rewards will continue on, I think, if I'm not mistaken, until game week 86 included, uh, as from game week 87, so July 16th, it's after the Euro, basically. So I might be wrong on one game week, but uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, July 16th is a Tuesday, and that's when game week 87 will kickstart, uh, will kick off, yeah. And, and then from then, uh, up till we do the snapshot, which should be around mid-August, so that's another four to five game weeks, their POC will be increased. So, the so basically, you'll just take the POC rewards from game week 86, and that will be multiplied by 1.66. And that's how um, uh, it will be. We can't confirm the exact numbers because as people are still purchasing from the marketplace, rewards will keep increasing. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, plenty of time, guys, to keep leveling up and basically getting your asset valuation higher at the end of the day. So, you know, there's lots of conversation through our Discord uh, maybe you're close to ascending and you've decided not to. Maybe you've grabbed yourself some Genesis or you've got one Genesis or you've got matching clubs. You know, all of these things add this um, this additional value. So uh, any questions you have, even after this AMA, we're here. Join us in, you know, join us in the general channels. Uh, if you've got further questions, there's also the FAQ. We will start populating that as the week goes on and next week goes on. Uh, I see a question here again. I'm apologies i can't see the name is the referral pr program already done as a concept for the updated game or is it not clear yet how that will work because we've obviously got one at current so um i don't know if anyone can take that for what we're looking at in the future we uh we design uh, pierre will be able to explain more we design one now in the in the free to play so you will see uh, what we have in mind for the free to play when we release it uh in May, the idea is really to get more people into the app to again make it uh, make it uh, massive. And on the uh, pro version, uh, it's not yet uh, not yet defined. So we still need to uh, work on the on the referral program on the specific details. So well, stay tuned. You will you will hear more uh, soon. Yeah, and you know we've we've got a, a year. Well, probably a bit more, but we've got a year of of doing referrals with our ambassadors with influencers and so th so forth like that so i think we should we've come in from a better starting point than where we were last year and you know certain things have been working really well um yeah, of course we take inspiration from what worked and uh, implemented make it uh, probably even more exciting because the game has more depth there are more possibilities so we can offer probably a different type of rewards within uh, within, within the game uh, so there are a lot of possibilities uh, a question here, uh, are there any plans of having a cash wallet at some point, point like so rare has? Um, that could, uh, yeah, I mean, it's something that we have on, uh, on our radar, definitely. Um, that definitely we are not able to do this in, uh, in, uh, in 24. Uh, because it's not something easy. There is also quite some regulation uh, attached to it because you uh, you start holding uh, potentially uh, uh, clients funds so i mean i don't want to enter into all the legal and the regulatory aspect but it's pretty heavy so beside the technical time to develop there is also that uh, that aspect to take into consideration but we definitely uh, want to make it uh, in the future easier for people to if they want uh, potentially convert the tpk into uh, euro or directly usd and wire that on their uh, bank account if they want to do it that will be the ultimate step into the uh, simplification uh, of the, the game and closing the loop uh, so that you enter with uh, fiat usd euros and you can end up with euros and usdt uh, usd sorry in uh, in uh, in your bank account again perfect um i think I've just seen one more question, which I think is super valid. So unless there's any burning questions, quickly throw them in now. And if maybe we can take them, but it's, I think this is a pretty reasonable one to take. Uh, we won't have problems claiming rewards and POC and refilling again, right? 
should have given an accent for that. I feel like I could have made that really punchy. Uh, with the addition of TP TPK, it was really annoying. So essentially the whole, I mean, Claudio went into it a minute ago. I'll let him go on it again. But yeah, we're talking about that that function of logging in and just wanting to claim your rewards and level up. Like, how is that going to look in, in like a nutshell? Uh, super I easy. Think, go I on, can yeah. this one basically, uh, and sorry for the, for the cat. Uh, the short version is um, by using a replica system, we're, be, we're able to abstract the, the transactions away from player will wish so. If you want to, uh, there'll be a possibility to suffer through all of that. Not sure you want to. Uh, but, but we're looking to abstract all of this away uh, and match it basically on player's uh, purpose. Uh, so it means that if a player really doesn't want to touch the blockchain, we can do end -to -end, uh, the, the, the end-to-end game without him ever having to touch the blockchain. Yeah, so it's, it's been a massive part of why we're doing this. Um, and hearing about it from, you know, I'm a lowly content guy at the end of the day, uh, hearing about what we're going to do. And it's exactly that. I, I, you know, I didn't come from a Web3 world. So claiming, leveling, refreshing, you know, we're also a web app at the moment. So we have cash to contend with. With the mobile app, lots of things are going to be a hell of a lot better because it, like Pierre said, it's a replica. So you're just doing, you're mirroring what's happening. But if you do want to connect a wallet, you can connect a wallet. If you don't, you can have this nice seamless um, action that goes on and you can just focus on predict predicting and playing. So I think it's a, a much better world that we're going to be living in, everybody. Um, I think it's probably good for maybe a little summary or a little closeout from Claudio and then we will call it a night. Uh, from me, like... Maybe like, just before, before you do the closure, because I, I do believe we still have some questions and answers. So what I propose, guys, uh, if you go into the channels, uh, we've introduced uh, FAQ Pookie24 in the community uh, section. Go there, ask your questions. Uh, if you missed a question, I'm sorry for that. Uh, there were plenty of them, but we'll make sure to answer all of those questions. Just go into FAQ and you can publish a question. Maybe some of them are already answered there. Uh, we'll make sure to answer all of our questions. If you feel that we're not answering them, you can still always open the ticket uh, and you know how fast our team responds. So just want to make that out clear. Like uh, if you feel left out, don't worry. We'll make sure that you get your answer. Claudio, the floor is yours to, uh, to close the session. Well, uh, I think it was uh, great uh, to, to give this voiceover uh, because, of course, a blog and a white paper is not that personal, so I hope for the for the, the players that have been listening that they can now understand a bit better like what is, has been at play behind uh, the changes. And uh, and of course, we're super happy to, uh, like Greg, you said, answer any question on Discord. And eventually, if we see that there are still a lot of questions, uh, plan a second uh, AMA once everybody had the time to digest the, the changes that we have outlined in the uh, in the white paper. And we can do this uh, next week or the, the following week. And, uh, and well, I'm super happy that we had the opportunity to, to share this update with you all, guys. So thank you. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll speak to you again soon. See you, see you in the Discord. Bye. Have a good evening.